Hello, this is Tom, and welcome back to Chatomics. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about a beginner's bioinformatics guide for single cell RNA sequencing analysis. Okay. So there are many uh, commercially available platforms for you to generate single cell data. And one of the most popular one is from 10x, the drop, droplet based methods. So from 10x, you can buy those uh, barcoded gel beads. So each gel bead contains a unique DNA barcode or just DNA sequences. And then you can prepare single cell uh, suspension and or single nuclear suspension and then run through the 10x machine. And at the right speed, so each cell will be associated with a unique uh, gel bead and within a single oil droplet. And then uh, the reverse transcription is, is occurred within the uh, same uh, oil droplet. So all the mRNAs are tagged with the same barcode from that gel bead. So after uh, sequencing, we can computationally group all the transcripts from the same cell together based on that barcode. And this is the final look of the sequencing library. So you have you have the R1 or the reverse uh, the forward read and the R2 the reverse read. So P5 and P7 those are the Illumina sequencing adapters, and the R1 read contains 16 base pair cell barcode. So essentially those gel, uh, barcodes from the gel beads, and plus or 10 base pair or 12 base pair unique molecule identifier. Depending on which version you're using, V2 is 10 base pair, V3 is 12 base pair. So those uh, unique molecular identifier can be used to deduplicate the uh, the duplicates of the PCR. And the arteries contains the genomic information. So although it it's a uh, pair end, but really only one end of the reads contains the genomic information. So there are other uh, single cell RNA sequencing technologies such as this plate based methods. So you can sort those cells into a single well on a plate and then order uh, reverse transcription and li library prep uh, is occurred into in the single well. And the SmartSeq is one of them and uh, it is not UMI based but it, it sequences the full length of mRNA and usually it's have much uh, deep sequen sequencing depths compared to 10x data but then it has much fewer number of cells, a couple of hundred. But for, for single, uh, from 10x data, you can get a couple of thousand, even 10,000 cells per round. And there's also this so-called uh, sp split and, and pull strategy. So in this method, you first actually split the cells into different wells, and then the cells are added first round of barcode. Then the cells are pulled again, and then split into uh, 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 different wells again, then added second round of barcodes. So each cell will undergo a different distinct path by uh, counting the unique barcode that is added in in each round. Of course, you can do it even three rounds or four rounds. And this technology is very powerful because you can actually uh, make you can make a library of um, millions of cells actually. But the only downside is that you need to start with a lot of cells because you lose some cells in each round of um, either split pulling or spl splitting. And this company called Pars Bioscience is uh, offering commercial solutions. So they provide all the reagents for you to perform this experiment. Okay. So the single cell uh, uh, RNA sequencing uh, throughput increase ex exponentially during, uh, through the years. I think the first one can be traced back to 2009. Like only like one cell is sequenced. But then you can, if you can see here on the y-axis, the later uh, uh, technologies can sequence tens of thousands of uh, uh, single cells. So with actually new tools and new technology coming out almost every week, uh, the best practice of analyzing uh, single cell RNA sequencing data is also changing uh, periodically. 
So let me actually uh, walk you through a typical single cell RNA sequencing uh, analysis. First of all, you get the raw reads from the sequencers. Those are the raw read FASTQ files, just like any uh, sequencing uh, experiment, bulk RNA sequencing or whole exon, whole genome sequencing. But after um, pre-processing, so you align those reads into transcriptome and then uh, count how many reads for each genes. Then in the end, you get this count matrix with rows of genes, columns of the cells. Uh, then after you get this count matrix, then you do some like, quality control to remove some bad quality cells and to do normalization because each cell has a different sequencing um, library uh, size or depths. And then uh, if you have multiple samples and they could be from different batches, you want to do some batch correction, select the most variable features or genes, then you can do some downstream visualization such as like uh, dimension, uh, after dimension reduction, uh, those PCA, TCN, or UMAP, and then you can uh, do clustering on, on the PCA space and identify distinct uh, cell clusters. So after you identify cell clusters, then you can find the marker genes of, of each cluster. And then you annotate those uh, clusters by either using marker genes or other more complicated machine learning approaches. And you can do like differential gene expression between different clusters or different um, like groups of conditions. And then you can also do some compositional analysis. For example, you have two different conditions. You can test whether the abundance of a particular cell type changes between different conditions. Of course, you can also study the dynamic feature of the uh, sample like you, uh, by doing some trajectory inference. So I'm going to actually dive into each step of, uh, into a little bit more detail. So for read alignment, uh, and cell ranger is the 10x genomic commercial uh, solution. And then you can use it to count uh, how uh, to get that count matrix. And you can also use the star solo a star actually is a is a uh, RNA alignment tool for uh, bulk RNA sequencing, and Star Solo uh, extends its capability for single cell RNA sequencing data, so it's much faster than Cell Ranger. And more recently, there are like all those alignment free tools like Salmon or Clisto. Both of them have the bulk RNA sequencing version and also the uh, single cell uh, uh, RNA sequencing analysis version, so Alabin or Clesto Bus tool. So they are also much faster, and it turned out they are also much more accurate than the uh, Cell Ranger version. And of course, uh, one of the uh, things you need to note is that all the cell barcode uh, can have actually sequencing errors, so all of them actually uh, do some like uh, cell barcode correction. So in the end, what you get is this count matrix. So each rows will be gene, each columns will be cell, and each entry will be how many uh, counts for that gene in that cell. Uh, depending on whether you are using Python or R, actually in Python, the, the rows will be cell, the columns will be genes. And the uh, single cell RNA sequencing data, uh, it, the count matrix is sparse, meaning you may have heard about this term, so meaning there are many zeros in, in the matrix. And that actually imposed some of the challenges in analyzing those data. So after you get uh, the count matrix, you can do some quality control. And for, you can take a look at how many genes are detected in each cell. So here each dot is one cell. And then also how many total UMIs that is captured in each cell and what's the percentage of mitochondrial DNA uh, RNA in each cell. So high content of uh, mitochondrial RNA may indicate the cells are dying and uh, uh, those cells are of low quality, so we want to remove them. But again, the uh, cutoff is kind of arbitrary or subjective. So for example, like people use 200 genes as a cutoff for number of genes that are detected. And uh, for the total number of UMIs, some um, you can use like uh, different color of here. I, I believe we use uh, 
like also 200 something like here so i was joking that one of the ma main tasks for bioinformatics is to determine a cutoff so in this uh, bioinformatics paper actually they investigated a little bit about what kind of to use for the mitochondrial gene content so this is for the human tissue and this is for the mouse tissue and they found that in uh, so each little row is one data set they found that actually for human um, if you use 10 percent actually that's pretty good so you actually re, uh, retain most of the cells that are of high quality and but for uh, mouse uh, tissues or mouse cells uh, you can use five percent and then you can get uh, you can return most of the high quality cells and also you can use this new tool called miqc this is more like a data-driven uh, QC matrix that actually model the proportion of the reads that map to the uh, mitochondrial DNA genes. And then we'll actually determine a, 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 a color of uh, uh, probabilistically uh, to uh, remove those low-quality low cells. Okay, so let's talk about normalization and scaling. So for bulk RNA sequencing, you, you, might, you might have heard about uh, those units like RPKM or TPM. So RPKM is reads per kilobase of exome per million reads mapped and transcripts per million is short for um, uh, TPM. So all those kind of uh, units is used to, uh, are used to normalize the sequencing depths. And for single cell RNA sequencing data is similar. So you can use the number of counts for that gene divided by the total number of counts for, for that cell or the library size and times uh, 10 to the power of six. And usually you add a, a pseudo count. Uh, so you can either like very common, you use a one as a pseudo count. And the recent paper shows that that pseudo count can matter a lot. So you you can just add a very small number rather than one. So then you lock transform it. There are also more complicated methods for trans for normalization, such as SC transform implemented in this wrap package. So the next step is scaling. So what is scaling? So scaling essentially just shifts the, um, the uh, shifts the expression of each gene so that the mean expression across the cell is zero. So so you calculate the mean of uh, uh, of that gene across all cells, and then you minus that mean, and then you uh, scale means actually you divide that uh, by the standard deviation. The, so you so it's x minus mu divided by standard deviation. Okay, so this step actually gives a equal weights for all the genes. Uh, so, so that highly expert genes, they do not dominate the analysis. Okay. Uh, so actually this paper, uh, genome biology paper shows that um, the choice of pre-processing methods uh, was found to be less important than other steps in the single cell RNA sequencing analysis. So after we uh, normalize the data so we can do a dimension reduction so the view on the left is principal component analysis it's a linear uh, dimension reduction and uh, on the figure on the right is the u map or this nonlinear projection of a high dimensional data into a low dimension so as you can see here in the principal component analysis you can sort of also see the separation between different cell types or uh, but of course, uh, uh, principal component analysis has this benefit that the because it's linear transformation, so the distance between those points they mean something. So, for example, you know those two are kind of close to each other, then it means they are kind of close to each other. But on on the other hand, uh, your map uh, is because it's nonlinear transformation and the distance between those uh, cell populations doesn't mean anything. Uh, but UMAP uh, is, is, is good at visualizing single cell data because uh, you can see those different cell types, they separate a little bit more clearly. 
For principal components, it's fine if the most variance is uh, captured by the first two components. And if uh, the cell types, they are quite heterogeneous, then you may need to plot PC3 versus PC4 to further separate them. And then by using UMAP, you can actually look uh, separate all the uh, cell clusters in just two dimensions. So by the way, I have a blog post to uh, show you how to calculate principal component an an analysis. Okay, uh, in this tweet, uh, Leo actually was uh, arguing uh, TSNI or UMAP are useless because they can actually make, make them look like any animals that you want to look at. But in my opinion, uh, UMAP or TSNI, they do uh, have a, uh, a place in single cell RNA sequence visualization. And uh, they're still very useful to have a global view of your data. And to get a high level of understanding of UMAP or TSNI, I highly recommend you watch this video by Star, uh, Josh Stammer. Then uh, after we uh, did dimension reduction, so principal component analysis, we then we can do clustering on the uh, on the PCA space. So we can use, either use k-means or hierarchical clustering on the PCA space. Uh, but we can the most popular one is using this graph-based methods, so implementing in Threat or ScanPy. So you first build this k nearest neighbor graph and then use the community detection algorithm to detect the clusters. Then you can visualize those clusters on uh, UMAP or TSNI. So one, uh, there are many uh, parameters when you are finding the clusters and then it's really cr critical to evaluate the cluster stability. So one of the uh, parameters is called resolution. If you increase the resolution, you will always get more clusters. But then how do you know whether those uh, cell uh, clusters are real or not? So uh, I think Scran they use this bootstrapping uh, methods to evaluate the stability of a cluster algorithm. So the cells are actually sampled with replacement and to create an, a new uh, data sets and then clustering is repeated on this replicate to see if the same clusters can be reproduced. So I also published a method uh, with a similar uh, idea, but I was using a uh, subsampling. So the idea is kind of similar. So I ran them sub subsample, for example, 80% of the cells, and then I reclustered them. And then the idea is that if the cell, if the cluster is stable, uh, the uh, cells are, will be uh, tending tend to actually stay together within the same cluster, even if you subsample like only 80% of the cells. And recently I actually saw this tool called Cytocypher. It's a Python package to determine uh, uh, the significantly different cell populations in single cell RNA sequence data. I uh, recommend you to check it out. I haven't used it myself. According to the order, it's much more scalable and uh, also generate sensible results. Okay, so once we identify the gene, uh, the, uh, the cell clusters, then we can calculate the marker gene. Uh, so, but then there's this problem <laughs> in statics called double dipping, which means generating a hypothesis based on your data, then, the te then test the hypothesis on the same data. So, uh, and this is very dangerous. For example, that's, uh, take uh, this data with no signal at all. For example, you simulate those data with, like, for example, um, random, uh, randomly like, by a normal distribution, and uh, you can uh, cluster still, although those cell types, those uh, data points are sampled uh, randomly, you can still cluster them. One, two, uh, three clusters here, and then you can compute the p values. And for the uh, for a difference in the, the means of those points, and surprisingly, all those three p values they are all very small, and this is relevant for single cell uh, marker gene uh, and uh, p value calculation because in single cell analysis we first actually cluster the, the cells into different clusters and then we try to find the genes that are different between the clusters, so. 
And this is kind of confounded and also kind of double dip dipping. So that's why you always see a tiny, tiny, small p-value in the RNA sequencing data uh, if, uh, for, you know, for the marker genes in each cluster. So those p-values are inflated. And also at the same time, you for for single cell data, you typically have many cells, and that can be a problem too because if you have a large number of data points or a large number of cells, the p-value will be small uh, just by definition of how you calculate the p-value. For example, in, in in this example, you have almost five hundred points here, five hundred points here. Although the effect size or the difference is very small, but then you get a tiny, tiny p-value. Same thing actually applied to a correlation. So if you, when you have gazillions of points here, although you get a small like a correlation point two here, but then p-value is like 10 to minus 11. So rather let's actually use some other statistics such as Cohen's D to uh, measure the, uh, the effect size or the differences. Okay, then after uh, you uh, class the cells, then you, you also calculate some uh, market marker genes, then you want to sell annotation. So this is really a daunting <laughs> task for, for us, and also it's an unsolved problem. And Matt B actually in our, in our group <laughs> curated the number of uh, cell type classification methods. I think that's already uh, several years, uh, one year ago, we, I think it already had like 60, so now probably had it has like over 100 different methods for cell type annotation automatically. So uh, I, I used a single R before it's this uh, uh, Pearson correlation, uh, Spearman correlation based method. So you just calculate the uh, gene expression profile in your cluster to a reference uh, to a reference and then the labels of the uh, reference which has the highest correlation and uh, is labeled to uh, as your cluster it's label and but then that actually de highly depends on the quality of your label and threat um, uh, v4 like uh, now they have v5 they implement this reference based on mapping so in this example they have a uh, protein uh, site seek um, reference and then they transfer the label from the site seq data into the RNA sequence data. Okay. Then you can do the differential cell abundance analysis. Uh, it's quite common because, for example, in this example, in the immunotherapy uh, context, so you have responders and non-responders, and for each, for all of them, you have different cell types. So, for example, here you have different uh, subtypes of CD8 T cells. And you want to calculate whether there is an abundance difference between responders versus non-responders um, uh, in each of the uh, cell subtypes here. So, but essentially, this will be uh, just a count table. So each row here will be one uh, cell type, and then each column here will be like one sample. Then you just the entry here will be the number of cells in that cell type for that uh, sample. And then you can just perform differential abundance analysis using d tool or Agile, just like uh, uh, bulk RNA sequencing analysis. And of course, you can also do uh, multi-sample differential gene expression analysis. So in this paper, uh, uh, it, it shows actually um, the uh, pseudo-bulk uh, analysis actually uh, performs really well and then speed-wise, can beat the linear mixture, mixture model. So for pseudobulk, I think I have a different uh, video uh, walk, walking you through how I actually generate the pseudobulk uh, using R code. So make sure you can check it out. And uh, for doing pseudobulk analysis, uh, the um, bioconductor package MuseCat or Scran can both do it. And uh, I highly recommend you visualize the data. So after you identify those genes, and uh, for example, in here you have two different groups, and then each uh, violin plot here is one sample. 
So you really want to visualize that per sample level because if you group all the cells together here, all the cells here together, the difference may be just due to the, uh, one sample. So clear in here, you see actually uniformly across the samples, like this group has a higher expression level of ISG420 than this group of cells. So stimulated and non-stimulated. Okay, I think uh, that's about it for today. There are many other resources that you want to check out if you want to dig into how uh, the analysis of single cell RNA sequencing data. So the orchestrating single cell analysis with bioconductor is a very, very nice actually, online book for you to read. And uh, there's uh, this paper called uh, The Triumphs and Limitation of Computational Methods for Single Cell RNA Sequencing Analysis. And uh, there are multiple GitHub repository, including one of my. Uh, I cu uh, we curate many different tools and methods for different um, analysis for single cell RNA seq data. Okay, uh, that's it for today. Uh, I hope it is helpful for you. Click subscribe if you like this content. Thank you. Happy learning.